You've been a commissioner for more than two and a half years uh, now. Uh, during that period, what are you most proud of? <laughs> um, well, um, I think it's a great mission to be a consumer policy commissioner. And this one is, for the first time, an independent portfolio, separated, well-defined. Well, to make a definition what you are going to do, consumers to benefit from this policy was my first, my first target. So quite early in 2007, I produced the consumer strategy, 2007-2013. And what marked my policy is uh, this absolutely necessary shift from goods to services and to digital. For me, uh, policy making is exactly about this, to offer a vision this vision to be discussed with all the stakeholders, to accept criticism uh, and then to strive for the better, something which will work for consumers. I'm so happy that this policy is human related. In an EU-wide investigation, also including non-members Norway and Iceland, more than half of the surveyed online stores failed the test. The responsible commissioner still thinks it's a good idea for consumers to shop online. Now we need even more value for money, just the opposite. Uh, go and check everywhere. Go and check who is offering you better quality and better prices. Don't compromise on safety. And, uh, and uh, support businesses who are doing everything to, to, uh, to offer you the best. Otherwise, if we just keep the market in our own countries, pretty soon this market will trap us. There will be monopolies, there will be people too much complacent, traders, producers too much complacent, and of course, at the end, this one will be bad for the consumers. Uh, what is the most common explanation why, uh, for example, online stores, online travel agencies, are not abiding to the rules. Is it that they don't understand the rules or are they mm. willfully trying to deceive the consumers? You know, frankly, I don't care what is the reason behind. Uh, if the trader is not, uh, is not knowledgeable enough to know the rules, I will not forgive him. So they must know the rules. Well, uh, maybe I'm a little bit uh, poisoned uh, from um, suspicions, but uh, I think that they know most of the time. They're just trying to rely on unawareness of the consumers and of different patchy work of our consumer markets in different countries. They'd like just to sneak through the loopholes in the net. Uh, I don't want to be harsh. There are plenty of reputable businesses and I'm working for them as well. So, but um, I'd like to open up a little bit one door which is behind which there is a very interesting, brave new world. And this is behavioral economics. So, um, how we behave as consumers, how we are targeted, how we are profiled. Is it the same if you have a pre-checked box? on internet. Well, about some of the things like insurance when we go and, and buy a, a, a ticket. Uh, well, it's certain that we consumers uh, most probably will not outcheck the insurance because this is still in our mentality, maybe from previous ages, that, well, it's road and everything could happen. But if we are not pre-checked as consumers, we very rarely checked in. So is it really right and fair to make such kind of pressure on us, psychological pressure? I think not. That's why in the new legislation, there will be a ban on pre-checked boxes. This one will provoke our thinking. And of course, if as a consumer, I would like to be insured, fine, very good. But nobody should take the decisions instead of us. Um, if we go back to the, the sweep on online electronics, uh, only three countries, and among those two non-EU countries, parts of the single markets, mm. but non-EU countries, has agreed to name the covered companies. 
uh, from a consumer point of view, would it not be a great idea to publish whom to trust and whom not to trust on the internet? Yes, it is a great idea. But member states disagree with this. Uh, there are different legislations in different countries. Some of them uh, treat this as uh, damaging the reputation of businesses. But actually what we are doing is pure facts. I mean, every single national authority could prove that this company breached the rules and that's why they are in, in, uh, in, in their focus of attention. Well, about publicity, I can't do more because this is at national level. But um, actually there will be a change. All these authorities will track down to the very roots wrongdoing companies will take administrative measures against them and also court measures if it is necessary. Frankly, I very much appreciate openness in human relations, in market relations. I think there is no better remedy but publicity. And this one will be also an alarming signal for the businesses to be more uh, more aware that reputation is everything what we, we have. Historically, uh, the Commission has fought uh, numerous battles with Microsoft, uh, the software giant. Uh, I know that you have, have, have been a little bit engaged in, in the Facebook and the, the, the user uh, uh, rights uh, on that. If you look at a company like Google, for example, today, mm -hmm. who is the, the dominant giant when it comes to supplying digital books, maps, uh, uh, spreadsheets, what not. Uh, are there any reason for concern over the dominance of one player on the internet field? That's, what we have. That's why we have uh, uh, a competition watchdog. Uh, so if it is about competition, I would say with one sentence, competition is the best friend of the consumer. Uh, this is one of the strongest competencies which European Commission has. And uh, as you mentioned several issues, we never hesitate to use this competence because again this is good for the credibility of, uh, of the market and at the end of our society. So um, yes, I'm a, a great supporter of uh, opening up the markets. I think that geographical restrictions, levies, are something which is outdated, we need to reconsider because this one is could be used as a market killer in many ways. Uh, and from my point of view, I'm also working on, on, on this. So uh, I had last year, no this year actually, in, in the spring, uh, I invited um, uh, the digital, the big digital companies to, uh, to work together at this stage on the base of um, self-commitment and self-regulation, which by the way I very much appreciate, to make um, clear rules about uh, how they treat consumers in respect of targeting, profiling, using for commercial purposes your own your uh, consumers consumers' data, because it's not only about uh, only about from the from the legal point of view of um, uh, data protection. Okay, this is one thing which is about civil rights and uh, clear enough, but using the commercial data, this is new ground, which is so far uncharted and untouched. And we need to make very clear rules not to abuse consumers' uh, consumer rights. And I'll give you one example to be more concrete. Imagine you are a consumer who is looking all the time at the low end of the market for one or another reason. Maybe this is just your, your decision. If this commercial use of data is somewhere loaded and, and processed, next time when you are going to take a loan, and I'm not, I'm not inventing, I mean this is a, a true case, then the bank will read your consumer preferences, seeing that you are always uh, on, on the low end of the market, you will not receive the credit.
it's very it's a very fragile balance. We need this service. Somebody to provide you more information instead of you just uh, looking hour after hour of what you are interested. But at the same time, you you might want to change your mind to buy a smaller or to buy a bigger or a more efficient or or a bicycle. So that's why it's very important to keep all the variety of choices accessible for consumers. Don't divert the minds and through this actually narrowing the, the, the choices. I, I, I referred before to the behavioral economics, but this is really very important for, for us.